Hello. I would like to take you to my backyard planetarium for an hour in the life of the Earth and the Moon. For this simulation I've used these two balls as models. My Earth is 73 millimeters in diameter. That means that consequently the scale of the simulation is 1 to 175 million. However on that scale my Moon is slightly too big. It should be 19.85 millimeters and it's actually 22 millimeters but it's the best thing I could find on short notice. For this simulation I've used some very advanced technology in the planetarium. I believe the system that moves it all runs on chocolate chip cookies and coffee. Oh yes, the string is nice too, but the grass could be better. As our simulation starts, the Earth and the Moon will both be moving across the screen, from right to left. The Sun will be behind us. So here it goes. If I'd run this simulation in real time, you'd pretty much be looking at this. But if I speed up the simulation, an hour looks like this. Is that it? Yes, that's it. This is how little the Earth and the Moon move in one hour. What strikes me is how small the Moon looks and how far away it is. Mind you, at this scale, the Sun shall be an 8 meter ball at a distance of some 850 meters away from my Earth and my Moon. I didn't have an 8 meter ball available. Besides, there were some practical issues. If you were to perform this demonstration on the White House lawn, you'd have to put your 8 meter sun, your 8 meter ball, somewhere near the Washington Monument. So I just stuck with my Earth and my Moon and I ask you to imagine that the sun is some 850 meters behind us. The entire orbit of the Earth at this scale is some 5 kilometers long. Earth covers that orbit in 365.25 days, that's in 8766 hours. That means that in one hour at this scale the Earth covers a little over 61 centimeters. The Moon being on the outside actually travels a little over 2 centimeters more. Every 24 hours the Moon moves forward on its orbit around the Moon-Earth barycenter by some 50 centimeters that is, at this scale. That is why, as the Earth rotates every 24 hours, we have to turn an additional 50 minutes to see the Moon in approximately the same position in the sky again. So what's my point here? What I'm trying to do is to give you a realistic sense of the movements of the Moon and the Earth in real time. I find that I get questions from people who are having trouble to comprehend magnitudes of the movements in the Earth-Moon system. This often leads to incorrect notions about the effects on masses in general and water in particular. In my opinion, the reason for most of that confusion is that we've all grown up looking at animations and pictures in which dimensions and timescales have been adapted to fit our field of vision and take place before we fall asleep. This is typically done because it's the only practical way to show what the maker wants to show. But this may eventually lead to misconceptions in viewers who have become unaware of the true scale of dimensions and times. To be honest, I cheated a little bit. My Earth should have moved along a circular path, but given the 850 meter radius of the circle and the fact that during one hour the Earth moved less than 5% of a degree, the difference was only about one-fifth of a millimeter. What I would have liked to show you was how, in another seven days, the moon would have crossed the path of the Earth. But then I would have needed a much larger backyard. A football pitch would have been good. How could the moon have pulled ahead? Well, seven days prior to our simulation, the moon was lagging behind. But Earth's gravitational pull was continuously pulling it forward so its angular velocity with respect to the Sun was increasing. 
that forward pull decreased and the moon had maximum angular velocity at the moment of our simulation. That's why it moved ahead some two centimeters more than the Earth did during our simulation. In the next seven days, the Earth's gravitational pull started pulling back on the moon. What I did do on purpose is not to put the Earth on top of the string. The string represents the path of the barycenter, that is the common center of mass for the Earth and the Moon. At the time of our simulation, the Earth is actually a little bit on the inside of that path. But the Moon's gravitational pull is responsible for the acceleration of the Earth back to the outside again. Of course, the Moon influences the Earth's path much less than how much the Earth influences the Moon's path, but it does have a small but distinct influence. Also, I should have slowly turned the Earth by 15 degrees during our simulation, as that is how much it rotates in one hour. I should also have tilted it by 23.5 degrees, but to be honest, I was happy if it would just stay put on the grass, so I didn't bother. So, how does this tie in with oceanography? Well, I hope this video gives you a tangible insight into how slowly Moon and Earth revolve around the barycenter. So if you choose to calculate inertial effects in the Moon-Earth system, that's completely valid, though pretty complicated. After watching this video, I hope you appreciate how small the figures will be that you will be running across in such calculations. Thank you for watching.